Welcome to Indiana Sports Beat Radio, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni! Fires upfield into the end zone, and it's caught! Jelani Woods! Touchdown! I-N-D-Y! A 43-point night for Tyrese Halliburton! I like that button! Galloway drives all the way to the hole, throws it up, got it! Indiana's got their first lead of this contest. It's pretty simple, I win. Google me. Now, here's your host, Jim Coyle. Welcome aboard, everybody. How are you on this Thursday? Appreciate you being with us, as always. Plenty to get to. Of course, Indiana Sports Speed Radio, powered by Andy Moore Honda. Just go to andymorehonda.com to get more to your door and the best in new and used vehicles. And the Autograph app. Autograph is where real fans, not true fans, but real fans, get unreal rewards. The first app to track and reward fans for loving what they love most, turning passion into access and experiences. Download the Autograph app in either the Apple Store or the Google Play Store today. Yeah, Autograph is where unhinged fandom meets unreal rewards. Just uh, use the link. Go to link.ag.fan backslash ISB Media. And use ISB Media as a uh, code anytime asked for that. And, uh, man, during the NCAA tournament, they had game tickets for uh, dollars. Few, like less than 20 bucks. But a uh, great place to go to get everything all in one spot for uh, whichever team you follow. But make sure you download the Autograph app and uh, use the ISB Media code. How's everybody doing? Another great show planned. Uh, Shannon Griffith will join us. We'll talk some football as we draw nearer and nearer to the end of uh, spring camp and the uh, spring game coming up next week. A week from today, as a matter of fact. Tyler Smith joins us from thehoosier.com today to talk about where Indiana is with uh, their need of filling. Six open spots, Tristan Airy from the Pacers as they continue their march to the playoffs. And special guest Clayton Anderson, musician, Nashville musician from right down the road in Bedford, joins us as he gets ready to open the big concert at uh, Indiana's Memorial Stadium this weekend on Saturday night. So looking forward to uh, having Clayton back on the show as well. Uh, and then, of course, Hello, friends. The Masters is underway, or gets underway. Uh, is uh, is underway today? Yesterday, the par three tournament. Today, the first round begins. Can John Rahm become the first back to back winner since Tiger Woods? Plenty to talk about, and uh, I love the fact that yesterday uh, when Rick Bozich was with us, I he he made mention that. Just a, a goofy, to, to 90% of the world, it was just a goofy little thing that didn't really mean anything. Uh, but he noted that in the uh, early in the season when Indiana played UConn <laughs> and they got their butt kicked, of course, but that at the end of the season when UConn played Purdue for the national championship. Those games were separated by five points. And I just pointed that out. I said, uh, yeah, uh, today on the show, Rick noted this. Oh, and then there's, of course, your, your couple of proverbial whack jobs who go crazy, but hurt fans who, uh, take everything as, as if it's life or death, uh, cracking me up. But, uh, it is what it is. Hope everyone's having a great one. It's almost it's almost ready for the weekend. John Boy, how are you doing? Good. Sorry for the delayed response. My mouse wasn't one to work for me. But I'm doing yeah. good on this lovely Thursday. It's raining where I'm at, but it's still Yeah, a well, it's Thursday. been raining all day, all night last night. It was uh, actually wonderful. 
I had the door open uh, and just listening to it. What a wonderful, wonderful sleeping night that it was. Um, yeah, that was that was something. Brian pointing I need this out voice the voice back though. I'm starting to sound. I'm, I'm still sounding froggy, as they say. Yeah, well, don't sound froggy you don't, all week. You don't have to tell me about that. I dealt with that for two weeks more than more than froggy. That's true. Uh, Brian pointing out that the Pacers are now tied with Orlando at 46 and 30. Whoops, I missed it. 46 and 34. One game back of Cleveland, who they play tomorrow. We'll get uh, all caught up with Chris Denary when he joins us. Mason Gillis is in the portal? Is that for real? That is true. Purdue. Both him and Ethan Morton from Purdue squad have jumped in the portal. Two guys who uh, ended up getting pushed to the bench, not getting the minutes that they would have liked to have gotten. Um, understandably, but I, I don't. They're experienced players, both of those guys. So um, very interesting, mainly because you don't see Purdue guys leaving. Not only do you not usually see Purdue guys leaving, especially both of those guys have been at Purdue. They were they both be fifth year guys? Yeah, both of them have one year of eligibility left. I mean, it seems like they've been at Purdue for a long time. So, shout out to everybody joining us on the uh, Andy Moore Honda Hotline as well. Brian, how are you? He's down in Southern Florida. Donald is in Atlanta, normally from Southern Indiana. Bob down in Georgetown, Indiana. Fred over at Easton. Viper, haven't seen you for a minute. Uh, yeah, another day of the portal, Robert. It's going to be going that way for a minute. Uh, shenanigans. Russell, how are you, sir? Philip? Yeah, that's a lot. That is surprising. Morton and Gillis into the portal. But like I said, man, those guys, they're not, it, they're, they're not, they're tired of sitting on the bench. Um, it's going to be interesting what, Purdue fans have to say about that. Um, like I said, because uh, you don't see that from Purdue much. Um, so that's very interesting. And uh, that'll be interesting to talk about today. Um, it is especially spring when the Masters hit. Brian, I agree with you, sir. Justin, JB, I think, wasn't he one of our winners? D did Justin, is Justin... Did he win the um uh, yeah, Justin yeah Justin was our um bracket challenge winner. Justin, you have to start placing some bets for me, dude. Uh yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, a lot of rain in southern Indiana, he also points out. Uh Pete says if he can't decide what's best for the Pacers. He thinks he likes them staying at the six more than going to the five. And that would reference who they would end up playing. Brian pointing out that if the Pacers, if it started today, they'd get the Knicks and OG Ananobi in the first round. Yeah, there you go. He's, he's not super crazy about that. OG has shut Ty down in the past. Well, OG can shut a lot of people down. It's what he do. Uh, what a what a great all around NBA player he has become, offensively and defensively. Um, and what a find again by Tom Crean. He doesn't get the credit he deserves. David jumping on from Dagonia Springs, Georgia. No, it's Indiana. Forgot. Buffalo Bill with us, our longest. Our longest tenured listener. Very proud of that. And we appreciate you, Brian, for being along for going on eight years now. Um, and speaking of which, you know, we, we put the show on YouTube just a couple of years ago and you know, sometime in 2021 and it took us 16 months to get to our first million views 
It took, takes time to build that up. It took one year to hit 2 million views. And that was last October. And we're closing in on 3 million views in just over six short months. That's we. That's a testament to you guys, and we appreciate you. Um, who's going to win the Bastards? I, I, I'm in a bracket that Pete's brother runs that I got so lucky and fortunate to, to tie to win last year. And so uh, back at it again, I definitely picked – I did two this year instead of just one. Because I had to pick John Rom. I had him last year and I, I had to pick him again, but that's a little tricky when you, you know, it's winning back to back titles in anything is difficult. And, uh, but I had to pick him. Um, I had to pick him. So there's that. Indiana football spring practice has been rolling. Shannon Griffith will join us here in, uh, in the next segment. And we'll also hear from Kurt Signetti as uh, he spoke to the media this week. And we'll see what he had to say. So we'll go ahead and take a break so we can get back and get to that. Don't forget, make sure you download the Autograph app. It is uh, free. But you can find all your IU content there, including ours right there but autograph is where real fans get unreal rewards it's the first app to track and reward fans for loving what they love most turning their passion into access and experiences download the autograph app in either apple or google autograph where unhinged fandom meets unreal rewards the link for ours specifically it's just link.ag.fan backslash ISG Media. I'm going to have to get uh, write that out so we can put that out on the screen. Makes it a lot easier. I never thought about that. But uh, we'll do that when we come back as well. Right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. In the market. Okay, banners, banner, banner. I wish you could, I wish the new banners added would go at the top. Is there a way to sort them? Just give you that option. I'm talking about on. A... I know what you're looking at, but I get you yeah. can't sort them. I see that. No, it's, it's, but I just added that. FYI. All right, let's see. It's not showing up on mine. I don't know why. Maybe it'll take a second to populate. Oh, here's Shannon. We're going to bring him in. Good morning, sir. Hello. Welcome in. Good to see you all. 
in my hotel room down here in Indy today. What you got going on there? I've oh, got a couple meetings down here today. So, good old meetings. Oh, yeah. Day job getting away. Oops. Put the wrong button there. All right, here we go, guys. Whooper filet and enjoy it cooked to perfection in Chop Shop Steakhouse. Chop Shop Market and Table, a part of the Wild Food Group, is your butcher, baker, and fish house, no matter where you live. This segment is brought to you by the Chop Shop, home of the Indiana football and men's basketball coaches shows. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio here on this Thursday. A little bit of football. Shannon Griffith from Hoosier Tailgate joining us. Spring ball about to wind down. The spring game coming a week from today, Shannon. And, uh, Eh. Spring <laughs> is what spring is, but uh, things start to separate. Uh, the difference between for Indiana is there's not going to be all the secrecy with who's what and who's where, who's who. Well, well, you know, our, uh, we haven't made a decision on quarterback yet. Uh, you know, uh, well, I know it's the third game of the season, but we we still uh, we're looking at our quarterbacks. Uh, there won't be any of that. No. Um, Curtis Rourke, who <laughs> was easily, I mean, called the starter almost immediately, and that's not going to change. I don't think. Um, I think the the only question in the quarterbacks room will be who's going to end up number two, uh, and and I, I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know if Tyler Cherry can. Uh, usurp uh Taven Jackson or not but uh, we'll see but it's definitely a different spring than say a, a year ago for Indiana yeah and you know listening to uh Sig's presser the, you know on Tuesday after their Saturday scrimmage now while he didn't divulge a lot I do think uh, he did. He did tip his hand in a few areas, such as that quarterback, where he basically said that Rourke has significantly separated himself um, from the pack. Um, and I think we're seeing the same things that maybe Taven has always hampered him is the inconsistency, where on one day he'll have a you know a significant improvement. But then the next day will be kind of a step backwards for him. And I always caution the fact that he's still a young, a young player in a lot of ways. Um, but I think they they they've settled in pretty much with Rourke. Now I don't think they're going to go through the summer and say he's our starter, um, you know, outwardly. But uh, you know, I don't think Tyler Cherry uh, is ready. Uh, in in a lot of ways right now to make any significant push to be, you know, that two or even number one star. Um, I think we'll have to see how the, he, see how he matures through the summer into the fall camp. Um, no question, being there in the spring has been a huge benefit for him. But Rourke, um, by all accounts i think has moved himself in a position to solidify himself as the number one guy without without question uh and it's going to be interesting to see this offense actually mm -hmm. uh in the because it's it's something the entire program is much more organized uh the practice is much more organized uh everything the 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 direction is organized there there is a uh a definitive point of what has to be reached and uh it, it's it's going to be it, I, it's going to be interesting to see 
what kind of a turnaround that can be made? Because the biggest question for me still is, though, a lot of players brought in, but most of these players were what you would call mid-major players. Mm -hmm. And that is a gigantic question because I, I'm not saying that uh, they're not – going to excel because I don't know, but that does make you wonder, can there be that much success with this many guys that, you know, mixing them in is one thing, but it's been an abundance mm -hmm. of guys that have come over from what you would call the mid-major level. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't necessarily get overly concerned with the mid-major players that are coming into a skill position, let's say, wide receiver, running back, in some cases, secondary. Um, you do have a little bit of a question mark when you talk about offensive linemen in that regard. Um, sometimes they're maybe a little undersized in terms of a Big Ten caliber offensive lineman. But I think what came from JMU and some of these other programs, um, Troy, Charlotte, some of those areas, they, you know, they, for the most part came from pretty solid mid major, you know, programs. So, um, but we'll find out now, a lot of them, especially in that interior line have not participated this spring because they are all recovering from a surgery from last season. Um, so we may not get an indication at this point in time where those guys stack up. However, um, I think in the offensive line right now, um, I was pleasantly su surprised that, you know, Coach Signetti felt that they've got some depth there and it's allowed some younger kids to get more uh, – quality reps, evaluations that Bobstead could go through. And, and I think they feel that they've moved forward in that direction on the old line as it pertains to depth. Um, I do think there's a concern um, based upon just me reading into, maybe overly reading into what Coach Signetti said Tuesday was, I don't think in the defensive line, they're overly comfortable there with their depth. And I do think they will evaluate the portal in terms of potential um, people that can help, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And I think they're a little uncertain in the secondary um, as it pertains to what they have there. However, I do feel like they feel like they have a strong linebacking group. Um, and I was overly impressed with the Fisher kid that came before uh, the mics there last week and uh, and how he spoke um, there at, in front of the, the media the last week and how he handled himself. Now, I know that's far different cry from being out on the field, but there is some translation to how a kid handles himself there until, and how he handles himself on the field. And I think you saw a very rock solid kid that probably is a pretty darn good ball player that came from JMU. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt that there are great athletes. I mean, uh, football, a little bit different than basketball, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, you look in basketball and you see guys, they come from all over. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it takes, you know, whether it's just a year of development, uh, right. there are a lot of different reasons for it, uh, overlooked. Um, there's just a lot of different reasons. So, but it's going to be interesting. But again, then you have uh, systems and certain systems work. And if, if you're able to have success with that, then booyah, roll on with it. Uh, but it's going to be interesting, like I said, when you get into big boy conference play, uh, but, you know, against the, the lower end teams, I, I don't know that we're going to see a difference, uh, whether it's the Big Ten or whatever. So, well, you get looking, but the biggest ahead. thing now, you really don't have a measuring stick as it pertains to the Big Ten because of the, the landscape is so, you know, drastically changed now with these other teams coming in. So, you're kind of in that era of, you know, 
how does everyone truly stack up with everyone that's coming in, you know, outside of the, you know, the top tier programs like Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, but the rest of them, I'm not quite sure how they all stack up, you know, as it pertains to what one has or doesn't have. But, you know, we're going to find out relatively quickly. But like we've said before, having those eight home games, huge, huge advantage for Indiana. Absolutely. Uh, oh, yeah, big time. Uh, not only that, I've talked about, and it's 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 kind of, I don't know, it's, it, it's funny to make, for me to be making this analysis, but the fact that there are so many teams that have a new coach, but Indiana yeah. is one of them. Yeah. But Indiana seems to be, uh, I don't know, less impacted or better impacted than most. Usually there's a step back, but I think for Indiana, it's going to be an instant step forward. That is a rare thing to see when you change coaches to have an immediate step forward, but I think that's going to be the case for the Hoosiers. Well, certainly there's that opportunity uh, just through what we've seen to date on paper and what we're getting an opportunity to you know, de decipher from what's being said in pressers and things of that nature. We'll get an opportunity to see on the field Thursday evening, you know, what is there. Not that it's going to be overly uh, informative in terms of what they're going to do offensive and defensively, because it's going to be very, probably a very vanilla spring game in that regard as it pertains to what they do on both sides of the ball. But I do think that, um, I thought some poignant co uh, comments that Signetti has had at the podium talking about the wide receiver room, you know, the four transfers that have come in have been really dynamite in his eyes in terms of what they've been able to display and him making the comment about Donovan McCauley having to step it up. Um, you know, uh, that just shows you right there that uh, just because you were something a year ago has no bearing on what is coming before you now, you must compete and you must compete every single day uh, because like he said, the cream will rise to the top. And right now that cream that's at the top of the, uh, the wide receiver room sounds like to me, the vast majority of the uh, transfers uh, with the exception, maybe to EJ Williams, who unfortunately the entry bug with that young man has a tendency to creep in at the most inopportune times. And, I don't know if he is healthy back practicing or not, but it didn't sound like he made it uh, to the scrimmage Saturday. But uh, again, I have no knowledge one way or the other. Um, and, and yeah, it's a uh, tag on. I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> I rambled on too long. <laughs> no, no, I had, a, I was, I had a, a, a response to that tag on it. Oh, I know what it was. Signetti is not going to be handing out compliments. Uh, no. I, I can tell you that. So that's, as a matter of fact, you're going to hear more of that, of what you just said, than you are ever going to hear compliments, <clears throat> at least right now, at least until things get going. Because he's trying to drive and motivate this team to be something they have not, uh, to be better than what they have been, because they haven't been good. Uh, so he, he's trying to remind them, you ain't done Jack, you know mm -hmm. what? And if you want to do something, staying, staying level, ain't going to get it done. Well, so, uh, yeah, I, I think that's a, uh, just, uh, that's part motivation tool. I, I think, well, he said that on Tuesday, you know, the practice that they had on Tuesday after, you know, they had two significant days off with Monday for the eclipse where everything was shut down. Um, they didn't practice very well Tuesday. They didn't come out with the necessary uh, <clears throat> motivations that he thought. And he let them know it. Um, not to say that there wasn't individual performances there, but, you know, I thought one of his comments was very poignant as well when he said, it's not our job to please the players. It's their job to please the coaches. And, you know, in other words, like you just said, we're not here to please you. 
or worry about your feelings. You better worry about our feelings as it pertains to your ability and playing time, because that's what your job is. And again, that's laying the <clears throat> kind of the, the hammer down and drawing the line with some guys that maybe have coasted in the past that those days are over. And just because you were something yesterday doesn't mean you're going to be that way today. So um, I think they've probably done a pretty good job and they've got a good thumb on what they have and what they don't have at this point in time. And, um, you know, I, I think there'll be some activity with the portal um, for Indiana, both as it pertains to bringing in guys and maybe some guys jumping into the portal because maybe they don't feel like the fit is there for them. Absolutely. Uh, the spring game coming up one week from today on the 18th. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see the crowd mm -hmm. that turns out for that game because there has been buzz for Indiana uh, in, in, uh, in football, obviously. But spring games have not done well as far as mm -hmm. drawing. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see if that changes in the first year prior to them achieving anything. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, it'll be interesting to see the student involvement on a Thursday evening at 8 o'clock, uh, a part of that little five weekend, and whether the general fan base can get out and see that game uh, on, on Thursday night. Uh, hey, I'm making the trip, man. It's a three-hour drive from where I'm at, and I'm anxious to see with my own eyes what is out there running around uh, for Indiana. Um, and uh, I think if, you know, you're right, you'll get a gauge of, you know, that support, not to say that it's a, you know, end-all, be-all, but I'm anxious to see as well um, what, what shows up do the students show up? Because I think that's as important as anything is, is the uh, student involvement. And, and, and I think you'll, you'll see a pretty good, you know, inter squad scrimmage as good as it can be for a spring game. Absolutely. Looking forward to that. Uh, we've got some, some Kurt Sigdetti audio, as a matter of fact, uh, that we have not used yet. So uh, John boy, uh, we do. I mean, I will say, Shannon did hit on a lot of the great quotes, and I think one of the most recent things he talked about before we get to break here, he was talking about the, the, the players struggling to return from practice after the eclipse. So here's what he had to say about that. Sunday we showed it to him in the morning. Uh, so I think uh, a lot of them were mature enough to come out and have uh, the right mindset to get better, but too many of them that people that follow Indiana think, think are players okay came out like the old indiana and that's what we need to eliminate is that kind of habit choice decision mindset mindset baby it's a choice uh and and there's that's a lot to change that is that's attitude it's kind of hard to change uh attitudes especially the hardest one is going to be to change the attitude of the fans <laughs> but, but that comes with production. Yeah, uh, winning I, cures all. Bingo. I was like, you stole my – that's my line! <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I was going to uh, repeat that. It, it's because it's true. Winning cures all. Um, and it will. And that's – if uh, they can do that, which I expect them to do to a degree. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they can get done in this first season, but we're a long ways from that as uh, we're just a week away from the spring game. So there uh, is that. We've got lots more coming up. Appreciate you, Shannon. Yes, sir. We'll see you next Thursday. Absolutely for the spring game. And uh, we've got to take a break. Don't forget, Chop Shop, home of the Indiana men's and women's basketball coaches shows, as well as football coaches show be time first time for Kurt Signetti this year chop shop market and table home of the uh, Indiana basketball and football coaches shows is located just north of Bloomington High School south on South Walnut your local meat shop steakhouse and caterer no matter where you live chop shop market and table offers a great sit-down dining experience for breakfast lunch or dinner 
where you can pick out your own steak from the uh, on-site butcher or choose from their incredibly daily dinner specials, of which I had the fried chicken last night, as I told you I would. Um, you can find quality meats like locally sourced Wagyu steaks from the uh, Boyles family Wagyu uh, beef farm here uh, close by, in addition to bakery-made pastries, uh, etc. cetera. But uh, something else I discovered last night, they had this spicy honey. And oh my gosh, was it delicious. Incredible. We're back with more right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. If you're looking for a home in. All right, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. All righty then. All right, 25 seconds. New Honda with no payments for 90 days. That's right, 2023 and 2024 Honda Pilots, HRVs, CRVs, Honda Ridge Lines, payment free for 90 days. Or get 0.9% APR financing for 36 months on a 2023 Honda Ridge Line. Go to anymorehonda.com and get more to your door. This segment is brought to you by Remax Advanced Realty. Indie Home Pros team by Cheryl Sizemore. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio, here on this Thursday. Brought to you by our good friend Cheryl Sizemore and Remax Realty. Make sure for those of you in the Market for a home in the Indianapolis area, reach out to Cheryl and her two decades of experience. It could be the difference between getting the home you want or not. Reach out to her, Cheryl, at IndieHomePros.com. Uh, we are in the transfer portal season, all kinds of seasons. Um, football still vis getting visitors as well. 
Don't forget that. Uh, Ryan Conwell, the basketball side, he has got to be a a, a leading target for Indiana. The transfer from I Indiana State. He's got so many. He checks a lot of boxes. First and foremost, his stat line is pretty damn good. Shot 40% from three. He's got a two-year eligibility left. He's from Indiana. Uh, it, it just, that, that would be, that would answer, that would be a good one for Indiana fans. It would give them a, someone to cheer from, from, from the state, but he's, he's legit, man, legit 16 and a half points a game, almost six rebounds a game, a steal, just less than two turnovers in 34 minutes a game. He doesn't sit 40.7% three point shooting. And that was averaged on seven attempts per game. So that's not a, a small sample size. He's not chucking up one or two. He's getting it up there. He shot 60%, 61 actually, from, from field goal range overall. And he's an 85% free throw shooter. He checks the boxes. And I, I, former Pat, uh, Pike High School star, this is one that Indiana needs to land. 2022 Indiana All-Star. This is, this is a guy that got away from Indiana to begin with. That they did not see the value in. But now they can make up for that. And we'll see how that turns out, but I would be uh, that that's got to be one that's high on the list. Uh, when I look at his numbers and I look at all all of the boxes, like I just said, he's he's um, he's he's one that you you, you might have to get. What of uh, the in, the entire team of Indiana State that uh, entered the transfer portal for the Sycamores? Unfortunately, um, their loss. It's it's sad to see that. I'll be honest with you, but it is what it is, and it's the new state of things in today's college basketball landscape, college athletics landscape. Period. Um, the visits start to come. For Indiana basketball, as they have cast their net in the portal. Indiana still with six remaining scholarships to fill. Along with the returnees of Trey Galloway, Mackenzie Mbaco, Malik Renu, uh, Anthony Leal, the addition of Bryson Tucker, the 2024 McDonald's All-American. So they've already got good pieces coming back. Connor Hickman is another one and learned a great story about him yesterday from a friend of mine, Mike Ross, that when his son Mason was in a basketball camp years ago, when Colin Hartman was playing still, Colin was one of the camp counselors, whatever you call them. And apparently some eighth grader, they were doing a three-point drill that Indiana did. And there was an eighth grader that lit the drill up. And Mike said that Colin remarked that Man, that dude just scored more than we have scored in that drill. And that 
kid was, you got it, Connor Hickman. Another Indiana native. He's an Indian, he's a Bloomington South native. Um, I wonder if anybody has, I wonder if Indiana has anyone on staff that uh, might have an in with him. Joking. Of course, Mr. Halls, who was a former Mr. Basketball from Bloomington South. Of course, Anthony Leal, another Mr. Basketball from South. So there's a double connection. But in, in his junior season at Bradley, 14 and a half points, three and a half rebounds, three assists, a steal each game while averaging 40% from behind the arc. Uh, that's on two and a half made threes per game. So there's another good shooting guard. that is available and has direct Indiana ties. So the, the, Indiana, as far as filling these needs, the guard needs especially, their options are so much greater than they were last season. Their connections are better. I, I hope that the, one would hope that the vision towards what they're needing and what they're looking at is better on the coaching staff side of things. Um, that they realize that they have to have depth and they have to have depth not in by hopes that someone is going to perform well, but depth by people that is proven to play well. Creek Walker back. Haven't seen him for a while, but the J.R. Holmes pipeline. Yeah, all-time leading coach in the state of Indiana. There have been plenty out of there. But there's other guys. Cannon Carlisle. And uh, trying to get, there we go. Uh, Tyler Smith from thehoosier.com will join us in the next segment and we'll talk more about this. So I'll, uh, I'll wait till he joins us to do that. How about the Masters under getting underway today? Any golfers out there? Brian pointing out Illinois already landing two top 20 portal guys. Let me tell you, Brad Underwood has made a living of successfully mining the portal and rebuilding his team, not like Danny Hurley has. <laughs> but Illinois has been consistent in the Big Ten as being a challenger, man. They have been consistently good. Not great, but really good right there. You know, Purdue is an anomaly because Zach Eady is an anomaly. That anomaly is gone. And I, I think I said it, well, I know I said it. I can't remember when it was a while back, but I, uh, who, who's the team next year in the Big Ten? We, we're not going to know. We're not going to know even when these teams are filled out. We still won't know because... You don't know how these teams are going to perform, how these guys are going to perform together on whichever team we're talking about. What's Purdue going to be like? First of all, they're losing the mountain. They're losing their King Kong. And I, I know Purdue fans love the consistency and the, oh, the way that, that, Matt Painter does things there, which, you know, he's done a, a, a good job. But it's not an elite level 
if you're going to win a national championship, you have to be elite. I can't say that word enough. It takes elite players. Purdue did not have elite players. They had one NBA draft pick, and that's not going to win a national championship, period. Uh, Indiana had an awful team, one probable NBA draft pick, two potential with McKenzie and Baco, and I say potential. You have to have three or four. If you want to compete for a national championship, you better have three to four NBA level players on your roster. It's just a fact. The last six national champions have had a minimum of four NBA draft picks on their team. And that's just a fact. If you don't have it, you don't have it. So, it, I, I, I hate to, uh, Trey Galloway, for example, would be a great off of the bench guy. You're, you're not going to lose a ton. You're not going to lose much for him to come in and spell some guys for some minutes. But if he's playing the kind of minutes that he played last year, Indiana, they may be able to compete at the upper level of the conference. And they might be able to win a couple of games in the tournament. But that's where it'll start to die. And again, facts are facts. Um, well, the difference is, Tannis, Tannis says, I'm going to make the fans sick of the word elite. Well, I, I think that's that may be true. But unfortunately, maybe Indiana needs to be using that word. The, from inside, they need to realize that that is how it has to be. Because it is. Um, there you go. Jim Elite Coil. I'm not elite. Never said that. But that's just a fact, peeps. It's just a fact. And, uh, but I, I think that, uh, Indiana's going to do a better job this year. What's Purdue going to do? Because they're not accustomed to doing this. Matt Painter is not accustomed to have to use the portal. I don't know that he's, has anyone to the portal prior to now? That's a good question. They don't, those guys uh, haven't, ha, haven't been leaving, but it's going to start changing because when, now that Edie's gone, they're not going to be what I think Purdue fans think that they're going to be because they've got this 7-2 Will Berg on the, on the, on the bench. If he was so good, why you didn't hardly see him at all. I find that, uh, Hard to believe. Uh, so, but we've got to take a break. Tyler Smith or, will join us uh, in the next segment. We'll get up to date more on what's going on out of the portal. Later, Clayton Anderson will join us ahead of opening up the concert tomorrow night being held in Bloomington, along with Kristen Airy of the Pacers. We're back with more. Indiana Sports Beat Radio right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. In the market. That should have been a split segment there. There you go. I definitely get them started, boy. You should see the Twitter going right now. Those 
couple of Purdue fans are all jacked up. Yeah, it is Saturday night. It's all right. We'll straighten that out. I thought the concert was on a Thursday. I thought we talked about that yesterday. No, the concert is Saturday night. Thir- or we said, no, I don't know why I said Thursday. We said the 13th. That is a Saturday. Okay. If Gallo, if any of these guys are starting, Indiana, that's okay. You guys are not listening. <clears throat> um, pull in Tyler. Morning, Tyler. Hey, hey. You got the uh, the list of all the new guys that are coming and visiting and all of that. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's mostly updated. A lot are coming next weekend, but there's some. Yeah. About to get crazy. Well, I think that all of the names that they're looking at, I I think they're done looking at names unless something jumps because it's time to start. They've they've created their shopping list, and now it's time to go shopping. There you go. How about that? Yeah, it's just a matter of the Kentucky and Arkansas stuff, if – if there's anybody else that pops, but other than that, nah, that's. Uh, I, I don't know how that would even really affect it anymore. Now, hell, Con, there's nobody better than Conwell that I that is out there. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna say he's the best, but he's he's got to be. He's he's up there, man. Yeah, I think a backcourt of Rice and Conwell has got to be. I mean, throw throw the bag at those guys. All right, here we go, guys. Stonecrest Signature Series House Plans. We have several lots available with scenic views of the golf course. Contact Amy Rhoda with Rabesco Real Estate for additional information. 812-583-0919 or go to mystonecrestliving.com. That's mystonecrestliving.com for more details. This segment is brought to you by Hoosier Hanks East. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle. Presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Speed Radio here on this Thursday. Hope you're doing well, staying out of the rain. Joining us now, Tyler Smith from thehoosier.com to update Indiana fans on what's going on with uh, transfer portal action on the basketball side of things. Most of the action has been related around guards. Tyler and uh, obviously to me the uh, the biggest name in uh, for for Indiana to chase to me is the Indiana State transfer uh, Conwell and his stat line is kind of off the charts but he's there's he's not alone there's a, a few others as well yeah as soon as that name at the portal there has been a lot of interest. Uh, from fans and we were wondering if Indiana would get involved and they are they have reached out to him and so yeah it's 16 a game 40 percent from three he was also a big time player um, he can create his own shot um, he plays with confidence there's just a ton to like about that kid and you know obviously Indiana's trying to, to lock up multiple guys so I think right now um, Rice and Conwell are uh Two of the guys to really keep an eye on. Um, if Indiana can lock up a couple guys here in the next couple weeks, um, you know things can start to change in, in terms of uh, you know the outlook of this team. And they still got a lot of work to do, but there is uh, a lot of irons in the fire, as they say. Absolutely, and there are uh, a lot of options for Indiana this. There seems like there are more options for Indiana this year. There are definitely more options that have Indiana ties. Uh, a Bloomington tie. Uh, it, it's it's definitely a different year uh, for the Hoosiers. But Miles Rice 
Also a name at the very top of that list, a point guard from Washington State, someone who also had a very, very good year, averaging over 15 points a game in 31 starts uh, this season. He also added almost five rebounds, four assists per game, uh, and he's also an Indiana native from South Bend. Uh, it, it's just crazy the amount of Indiana players they could actually end up with on this team that mm -hmm. are quality, quality players to fill a quality need for this team, for that team. Yeah, and some of it is, you know, years ago, maybe the staff, uh, you know, didn't recruit certain guys or certain guys chose other schools, and now there's maybe an opportunity to uh, reconnect. But Rice, man, I talk, uh, I've talked to a lot of – a lot of fans and uh, even some scouts that say he's the real deal and, and understand that there's so much about his game that would fit this team. And I feel like, you know, if you look at something like three point percentage alone, you're not going to get the whole story. Um, he was shooting better uh, earlier in the year from three and then kind of tapered off. But he does so many things well. He can get his own. He can facilitate for other guys. You know, you saw this Indiana team when they were playing well. It's when not only – some of the time when Johnson was healthy, but when he was actually playing well, you know, with that group, um, Rice is a guy that could really pop off, I think, uh, in you know this one of these next couple of years here. And so he would be huge target. Um, I know he's he's high on the priority list. And, um, you know, I'm, I, what I'm interested to see is if Indiana were to land him, would they still be interested in someone like Carlisle or somebody like that that can also handle the ball would they go for multiple guys that can handle the ball that's uh, something this team needs but hopefully they don't just put all their eggs in one basket as we've seen them do before uh I see a lot of fans commenting that you know Indiana has virtually half of what they have coming back are guards Trey Galloway uh Anthony Leo uh, uh Gabe Cups and People saying, well, you know, he's this guy's probably going. No, there should be no starters, no starters on that team that, that yep. they currently have. If you do not find your starters in the portal, then you have not upgraded your team nearly as well as you should have because you have to have the absolute best you can get. And I, I this is not being negative towards a player, but – they don't have starter level quality guys on that roster at the moment, in my opinion. Yeah, I would say, you know, you look at Mbako and Renew, you know, those are solid players. I'm uh, yeah, you, I mean at the guard position. Yeah, yeah. You look at the guards and it's like, I mean, not only what you were saying, but the coaching staff should not limit themselves and try to be, you know, they can't afford to be picky as far as like, oh, we've already got this spot and this spot and we want to fill this spot. No, you go out and get the most talent you can possibly get. And then all that stuff will work itself out. Ideally, this team comes away with 10, 10 to 12 really talented players. And, you know, to, to take a page from the Rivals book, did you hear Matt Painter after their loss to UConn, how he talked about how guys sacrifice for the team. And there's certain guys in that roster that uh, sacrificed a ton of playing time for the better of the team. So hopefully they're also going out and getting guys that want to win and and even some of their current players. Um, I don't think a guy like Trey Galloway would be too upset if they bring in a ton of talent and uh, have a really good year. And even if that pushes him to a six-man role, who knows what, what that looks like. But um, they've got to go out and get the most talent physically possible and let all that work itself out. Exactly. Uh, Laurie asking, which one do Indiana fans – should they want the most? Who are the guys that uh, would benefit that team the most? I, I start with with uh, the Indiana transfer, uh, Conwell, and and then Connor Hicks is not too far behind. Hickman, rather, is not too far behind. But uh, it, it's just hard to overlook what uh, Conwell did at, at at Indiana State. His numbers are are pretty daggone tasty yeah yeah for me I, I think it's probably might be even a tie between rice and conwell that is uh that would be on my wish list to bring in two guys that can that can do a lot for you um and just man the entire roster would just look different if they bring in 
two really good guards that can get their own and facilitate and our team players and have ability to shoot and all that stuff. So that would be probably, in my opinion, the top of the, the wish list would be a dynamic point guard that can facilitate and run the show like Rice. Um, and then a solid uh, two guard who can also handle the ball that can really shoot in combo. Yeah, the, the difference in, is that Rice only shot 27% from behind the arc and Conwell shot 40%. Um, and there are also difference in ages, of course. Uh, but uh, is Conwell a point guard He's or, or shooting guard? I thought he played more too, but uh, he could be, maybe he was a combo, combo guard. Um, I've seen basically a lot of people I've talked to said there's an opportunity for both for them to get both. And I feel like if they were to get both that rice would be the one Conwell the two, but of course, once you're uh, on the fast break, it doesn't really matter so much when you're trying to push the ball. But as far as the half court, I think rice would be more of the one, but you know, we'll, we'll see what happens there. I think Conwell can do both. Hickman is another one. I think that they think is get, they need to land uh, a Bloomington, Indiana native, from Bloomington South High School, but his numbers, again, 14 and a half points a game, three assists a game, 47% from the field and over 40% from behind the arc, six attempts per game. Uh, that's Those numbers are pretty good. And uh, there's just, he, he just checks a lot of boxes. And uh, I think that, that with three spots left, do you take three guards? Um, I don't care what they currently have on the bench, to be honest with you, because none of those guys can do what these guys can do. And so I, I, I kind of ignore that, to be honest with you. You've got three spots. Um, I, I'm bringing in three guys that can shoot the hell out of the ball. Uh, I, they don't have to be you – you may need one good point guard – um, but then you're kind of in the same boat that you were not necessarily the same boat you were last year with the advancement of Trey being able to play it as a backup if he has to, but, uh, with Xavier getting hurt last year, Indiana found itself in a bad, bad position that you do not want to find yourself in again. Um, Indiana has Mackenzie Abaco on a wing. You've got the Bryson Tucker who is more than likely going to play kind of a wingish type player. Uh, and now the question also is with Malik Renu, is he going, can he play the five successfully? Will he play the five? If not, is Whitson back to running two bigs? Yeah, that's the big question. And, and some of the guys that they're looking at, uh, you know, from, I think, you know, one of them's coming uh, this weekend, Payne, and then you got uh, Williams, who is coming next weekend. You know, those guys, I feel like, and also uh, a guy that I've been uh, talking to uh, this week, uh, Elijah Malone, who is a who is the NAIA Player of the Year, and uh, he's got he's scheduling a visit with Indiana coming up here soon. So we got some uh, exclusive uh, news there that, that they're uh, scheduling something, and he's a 6'10", guy that can uh, can shoot the three and human highlight reel and does a lot of good things. But I feel like in the case of all three of those guys, you know, they they would probably be willing to come off the bench because they know they're going to play a lot of minutes as well. If Woodson chooses to go with Renew at the five, I think offensively that's the way to go. Renew at the five and Baco at the four, fill in with three dynamic guards. Uh, but obviously with Renew's occasional foul trouble, maybe more than occasional, um, and then the you know rebounding and pr protecting the rim issues that may come defensively from that they got to have a couple big bodies that are willing uh, whether they start or come off the bench so all three of those names are pretty intriguing. Yeah, Indiana's leading scores, two top two leading scores cannot be their big men. That just doesn't work. The numbers bear it out. Uh, you have got to be a much more offensively dynamic team. Indiana is going to have to be a much more offensively dynamic team than they were last year. And that does not come with 
Malik Renu and another quote unquote big man running at it, trading back and forth, being the 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 leader of the game and scoring. Mm-hmm. That that's why Indiana was not successful. You got to be beating guys on the perimeter, man. Um, yeah. Look, perfect example: Purdue in the national championship game, thirty-seven points for Zach Eady, but they didn't get the support. He didn't get the support because UConn shut their guards down and they they hit one three-pointer in the game, although UConn only hit three, but it was uh, it, that's a different dynamic. Yeah, they need to look at, uh, it's easy for me to say the two-time champions, but look at how UConn runs things on the offensive end. They play through their five quite a bit, but he's in the high post and they've got zoom action, Spain action, dribble drive action, two-man game. They run through him from the from the high post, um, and he gets plenty of touches, but it's not just, hey, back your guy down and, and you know go to work on every single possession. There's a time and place for that, and I think Renu is, is really good at that, and they're going to utilize that. But got to play with three or oftentimes four wing players that can get their own and can create for each other. And, um, you know, depending on who Indiana gets here in these next couple of weeks, um, we hopefully we'll see a path uh, to that beginning next year. Now, Larry Nerd, AK or Robert Avila, aka Larry Nerd from Indiana State, is a, a very unique uh, player because he is a big. He's not a big, but he's a big wing. Uh, I guess you can call him that. But a pretty good three point shooter. That much better, a much better three point shooter than say Malik Renu. And as crazy as this sounds, if you had Robert Avila on the roster, would you put him in place of Malik Renu? Uh, I would be, I would be really stunned if Renu is not a starter I, next year. That's not, that's not what I'm asking. I asked you. <laughs> I, I would still at that point based on the talent of those guys, I would probably, I would consider. If Indiana had a center, if they also land a, a center. Yeah. I mean, if at that point, then it gets really tough. I don't think it's going to happen because I don't think they're going to get a five. That's going to be starting caliber and, and get Larry. <laughs> but uh, if it was just those two, I would probably even be tempted to stagger the minutes much more than they did this year with where and renew. So maybe even they start, but it's only for like that till that first, you know, section of the game where the subs come, you leave one of them in then you stagger and then you're trying to figure it out. So uh, again, I'll be surprised if any of that happens, but. Yeah. While uh, Avila has hit the portal, he did so with a no contact tag, meaning coaches are not allowed to reach out to him. He'll, he'll reach out to you. Don't it's a, don't call me. We'll call you kind of a thing. Hmm. Uh, so that'll be interesting. Uh, but the big visits are coming next weekend for Indiana. Who all is coming in uh, then? Yeah, so actually early next week, I think, is Hickman earlier in the week. And then Carlisle, Williams uh, are 19th to the 21st that weekend. Um, so I know those for sure. There's a couple that are uh, waiting on. Uh, I don't know if it's been set and just hasn't been reported yet. Um but there's several other names who are, who are looking. We, you know, certain guys who know, who know the campus and uh, like the back of their hand, we're not sure if they're going to actually make a visit or not. And same thing with Malone. I'm not sure if that's going to be an in visit or on campus uh, visit, but uh, Carlisle will be uh, very interesting. I don't know if, if uh, fans saw this when Miles Rice shared one of his photos, it was when he was playing Carlisle and the two of them were about to check in a game. So some fans were like, is that speculating that he wants to play with Carlisle or was it just like kind of a random photo? That was like a week ago or so. And of course, that could also mean they, they're going to go somewhere else together. But obviously, IU fans look at that and they're thinking, man, a backcourt of, of two guys that can handle the ball and get to the rim, you know, maybe they're friends and maybe that's what that meant. But we'll have to see. So, yeah, next weekend is a big one. What's Malone's first name? Elijah. Call him Elijah. Post Malone. There you go. But um, uh, Tyler <laughs> Smith from the Hoosier.com. Go there for a complete and updated list of uh, visits. People that they Indiana's talking to, all kinds of information on each and every one of the players. 
Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. Thank you. You betcha. We've got more coming up here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio, including Chris Denary from the Pacers. Get you caught up there. And Clayton Anderson, who will be opening up the uh, the big concert for uh, Kane Brown this weekend. That's Saturday night going on at uh, the full ride tour, I believe that is, with uh, Kane Brown and John Party and at all. We're back with more. Brought to you by Hoosier Hanks East, located over off of College Mall Road. Great place to go catch the games, sit down and have a great meal, whether it's custom-made pizzas, wings, mac bowls. They've got it all, including Jim's Starting Five, baby. The best thin crust pizza around, I guarantee it. Back with more right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Formerly. All right. Look at that. Both right on time. Right here. Chris, Chris, may I introduce you to Clayton Anderson? You're oh, a country fan. No introduction needed. <laughs> How I you thought doing, that you might like that. I'm good. I'm real good. Been uh, been trying to stay out of trouble. Been running around. Sometimes like a chicken with my head cut off. But uh, it's been awfully fun watching the Pacers this year. It has been. It has been a lot of fun. Always enjoy listening to your stuff. Got plenty of it on my phone. Oh, I appreciate it. It's, hey, uh, speaking of which, real quick, Clayton, if I if I bring us back to one of your songs, will we get flagged on YouTube? Yep. Yeah, I already thought about that. Yep. Yeah, it stinks. I can't control it. It's all computer. I was okay. thinking about that yesterday. I was like, I might have the guy on that sings this song, but we can't play the damn song. <laughs> no, I, re I remember Pat McAfee called, texted me one morning. He's like, can I play your song? I'm like, yeah, of course. I mean, why not? Like, I, that, I would beg you to play. And then it flagged his show. And then he got really mad at me. And <laughs> his... <laughs> And then not, but uh, yeah, he, I was like, I, I can't control it. it it's like, uh, it's so frustrating too, because it, the, all, the YouTube is such a great place to uh, showcase and, and, and have, I mean, that's where I watch everything and it would be great to be able to get some music exposure. And we've talked about doing a couple other shows where, but it's, it's dang near impossible. You have to set it up like five different ways and then you, it's, it's really difficult, but. I get what they're doing, but it just kind of makes it tough when you're trying to break and get some exposure. Yeah. It's for your benefit, Clayton. That's right. Ah, well, we gotta, I mean, de de depending on some, on some I, cases. I hear you. I hear you. I was, ki I was actually kidding. Man, tickets are only 20 bucks, man. Yeah, they, they drop, they, uh, if you, if you want to see a great show, I mean, it's a, it's, you can't find no better deal than that. I don't even know. You can't even buy anything for $20. I bought a couple packs of Snickers the other day and it's $25. So that's pretty cheap. I, I guarantee it. That's, you couldn't get two, uh, two, uh, meal deals at, uh, McDonald's for that. No, it's, well, uh, I I'm spent fun. more than that. I spent more than that at Taco Bell the other night. <laughs> I, I'm pumped. I saw the stage. I was down there doing some sorority visits, trying to get them fired I bet up. You I were saw the stage. It was, uh, <laughs> it was unbelievable. It, it's huge. It's one of the biggest stage. It's a, it'll be the biggest stage I've ever been on. It was bigger than the 500 stage when we played it. So it was. Wow. Uh, I'm excited. Right, Ten seconds, John, guys. Here we go. I love John Party. 23 Honda Ridge Line. Go to anymorehonda.com and get more to your door. This segment is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Hey, welcome back. Indiana Sports Beat Radio coming to you here on this Thursday. Thank you so much. Brought to you by our good friends down in southern Indiana and Sellersburg. If you're down that way. Dr. J and Reynolds Family Dentistry, you need to keep up with that championship smile. Go see him. He'll take care of you. Uh, speaking of championship smiles, Clayton Anderson joining us now, along with our good friend Chris Denary from the Pacers. Clayton uh, performing this weekend in Bloomington at the 
full ride tour, kicking it off at uh, with with opening up for Kane Brown and John Party and uh, Jesse Murph, as uh, well as he's a big Pacers fan, big sports fan all the way around. Last time, well, not the last time I saw him, but uh, ran into him last year up in New York. He was sitting in the booth right next door, and I didn't even know it, uh, but got to have some fun with him then. But uh, Chris, big country fan as well oh, yeah. and uh, so great to have you both on yeah i've got i was just scrolling here through my uh, itunes uh let's see clayton i think i've got like 40 or 50 songs from clayton anderson uh it, he's wonderful uh, uh you know i've run into clayton backstage at some things and uh he's a huge huge basketball fan and when you grow up in indiana you got to be a basketball fan um and so clayton it's great to share uh, the stage with you here can't wait to, I mean, that, that you were just saying off air about the stage uh, at Memorial Stadium, how big it is and, and what kind of show it's going to be this weekend with Kane Brown and John Party. It's monstrous. It is. it is. It will be by far the biggest stage I've been on. It's it's bigger than the Indy 500 stage that we got to play on with Zach Brown and uh, and uh, and with uh, Keith Urban. But it it was, honestly, it gave me cold chills. I mean, I'm a Hoosier through and through. Uh but when I, I snuck in, I, I don't I legally snuck into Memorial Stadium and, and kind of came up the tunnel to, and to see it. It was it was really, really crazy. I've been I've been begging for him to do a big show like this for a long time. And uh it hasn't happened since 1986. John Mellencamp playing it. So I was there, baby. I was there. <laughs> Jim, you know what's interesting? I mean, you know, what's Clayton, you and I want to get this from you. You know what's interesting is it seems like all the musical acts want to be athletes and all the athletes want to be musical acts. I know um, I'm a big Darius Rucker fan and an old Hootie and the Blowfish fan. And when I had a chance to meet Mark Bryan and those guys, and they said when they were at South Carolina, we wanted to either be an athlete or a broadcaster. And they became musicians. And I said, well, I think you could do what I do a whole lot easier than I could do what you do. But Clayton, to that point, I mean, what you do, it's like an athlete. I mean, you're an entertainer. You got to put in the time um, and you're a performer and you got to be on each and every night, don't you? That's absolutely. I think I take a lot of my drive from uh, playing sports, you know, and in, in high school, it was everything. You, we, we, you practice nonstop. And, and I've taken that. And, and even when I was in college, it's like, it, it, you know, it, it's just... It's just, it's just what, it's just what drives you. And and I always dreamed of playing basketball. I dreamed of getting to play at IU. I dreamed of, so, so this to me is like the next best thing to be out on, on a field like that to last year when I got to sing my song, Indiana at the girls basketball game, which was, I mean, I was getting choked up. It was, it was actually kind of hard to finish it. I mean, assembly hall was packed. So, so those are things that, that I dreamed of as a kid getting to, getting to play at IU or, and, uh, and so music is just that next thing, but it is, it is really cool. The camaraderie between the athletes and the, and, and the artists, because it, it is true. We want to be each other a lot of times. <laughs> well, we get to do that. It's going to be awesome to, uh, it's amazing to me that there has not been a concert at Memorial Stadium since that Mellencamp concert. Uh, all that, those, is that almost 40 years ago. Come on. Yeah, thirty-eight yeah. years ago. Yeah, why? Uh, I'd I, I have no. This is, I'd have to believe this is going to start something, though, right, Clayton? I mean, when you think about people, you know, I love indoor concerts, but I love outdoor concerts. I mean, as a performer, is there any difference for you being, you know, in this big football stadium or being at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway or you know being downtown Indianapolis than being in a in a smaller venue? I, I definitely love that. I'm with you. I love the outside venue myself. It's there's something, there's something about it. You know, it's, it reminds me more of, I get more fired up because I feel like I'm tailgating for a football game or I'm, I'm outside <laughs> fired up. We can, you can go out and party in the parking lot and then roll in. And it's just, it's just got a different atmosphere. It's got a different smell. Like all your senses go together, you know, and when you're, when you're outside and when you're with a group of people, music, I think is so powerful anyway. Um, I think it really brings us together and, and inside just feels, I don't know. It just feels a little more staged outside. I, I love rolling outside anytime, it, unless, it's, unless the weather's bad, but <laughs> we're going to be great tomorrow. Thank you. Or, or on Saturday. Thank goodness. It's raining like crazy. Now I'm, I'm over. 
Oh, it's been raining for the last two days here. It's getting it's getting it out of the way. I think it's going to be not. It's cleaning up the uh, the, the uh, football stadium. That's what it's doing. It's that's, making sure that's it's right. all cleaning nice and up clean. the mess. Hey, by the way, I know we're talking we're talking basketball, but I know we're IndyCar guys too. What about Kyle Larson yesterday on the day? Yeah, I mean, my goodness, I think he was second fastest that I saw. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that, Clayton. I'm approaching year 25 in turn four. And, yeah, just following what I followed yesterday with Kyle Larson, I mean, he could drive anything, right? He could get on a lawnmower and, and probably make it go fast. But it is going to be fascinating to see what he does in the Indianapolis 500 and pulling that double. I mean, uh, you know, we have rarely seen that. But for him to get in an Indy car yesterday and go that fast, incredible. Yeah, yeah. I, he, when it, I've been out there at the dirt track races when he's raced out there, and I, he, it's what you said. He can get in anything and win. That, that dude is just a racer. It's pretty. It, he reminds me a lot of Tony Stewart. He'll just, yeah. He just can drive anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, he has that background. He's dirt track racing. It doesn't matter. He is he, and still, still does it all. He still races the the Chili Bowl, uh, whatever the case may be. But yeah, Chris. It, and Chris has been in turn four, like he just said, for all these years. He's seen a lot of races. It and there's been got there's been plenty of other people that have tried to make this crossover. And I guess the most successful was uh, Kurt Busch. Was his finish the best? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of all the people. Yeah, I mean, Kurt Busch was pretty good. Um, you know what he I think did. he finished like seventh one year. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, the, the the crazy thing about both those races, I mean, the Coke 600 and, and the, the 500 is you can have a great car, but if you're not in the right position at the right time, it, it doesn't matter. Um, so it, it, it will be interesting to see. But you're right. I, I mean, I think over the years, you know, I, I've told people two of the, the races that I really remember with the calls that I had was when Hornish passed Marco Andretti. Uh, Andretti was poised to win as a teenager at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and Hornish got him coming out of four. And then Clayton, remember J.R. Hildebrand? I mean, oh, he is oh leading. He is leading the Indianapolis 500. And all he has to do is make that final turn. And he goes. Don't into wreck. Football. Don't wreck. Don't wreck. Yeah. I mean, incredible. He wrecked. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's wild. Uh, we've got to talk a little Pacers while we have you here. They're yeah. uh, they're they're maintaining their uh, spot at that number six spot and kind of make a little bit run. They they won again here and most recently a game. They beat the uh, the Raptors handily, one forty one twenty three. Then you've got uh, a home game coming up against the cat or no, they're on the road at the Cavaliers yeah. before they come back to take on the Hawks. But uh, a couple of back to back wins. For the Pacers, the the game against the Heat, the NBA come out and said, "Well, we gave you one there, but uh, hey, we'll take it. whatever you can get." Right there, you go. Yeah, we uh, the Pacers have been on the other end of that quite a few times where they have not gotten favorable calls. So, uh, but yeah, the Pacers are in good position. They really need one win to secure at least six uh, in the Eastern Conference, which would put them for sure in the playoffs and having to avoid the play-in. Uh, they still have a chance. Um, you know, to get fourth or fifth. Um, and that's why uh, tomorrow night in Cleveland's a big game because Cleveland's just a game ahead. Uh, the Pacers right now have the tiebreaker. And if they beat Cleveland tomorrow night, they would own the tiebreaker. So there's a lot of scenarios. There's three-way ties and four-way ties. But the bottom line is if the Pacers win one of their last two, uh, they've got the magic number where they'll be in the playoffs. So that's great to see. Um, you think about it, two years ago, they won 25 games. Last year, they won 35 games. This year, they're at 46 and counting. Uh, so, it, 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 and what we want is racers and pacers, right? I mean, the month of May is really cool when you have, you know, the road course race and then qualifying for the 500 and you've got pacers playoff games. So, uh, hopefully that'll happen here in May. Clayton, are you going to the 500 this year? Are you in town? Oh, yeah. We're going to play. Uh, we play uh, Friday night. on. We Last year was the first time we did it. But after Carb Day, we play uh, uh, on Main Street. We bring a big stage in and block the street off. and So we'll oh. be there Friday night and Carb Day. And then I think I have a private party Saturday. And then I'm going to get my butt up and get out there early. <laughs> last year was the first time I've, I've ever got there so early to see the cannon go off. 
and that was amazing. She missed all the traffic. I'm going to try that again this year. That was, I struggled to get up, but it, but it was worth it. But it's worth it once I got out there. I, I don't know that I'll be there for the cannon. Let's just, uh, yeah, I, I will say this, that normally after every sporting event, when by the time I leave, it's, you know, usually two hours afterwards of doing it because you're doing stuff and whatever. I'm like, I'll be great now. I've been here for two hours working. I gave the that gave uh, time for the crowd to clear out. No, I, I didn't. I, I got did not move for thirty minutes once I even got in the vehicle. And I'm like, oh my god, three hundred thirty thousand fans, and uh, there'll probably be that again this year. Oh, yeah. There's no reason to think that there won't be, Chris. Yeah, you just have to know, Jim, that when the race is over, you take your time. You don't really rush to have to leave. You just I, I'm veteran enough that I know we go have a bite to eat, have a nice cold one this year. You know, we'll listen to some Clayton Anderson music, but there's no sense in going out and sitting in your car in a, in a muddy parking lot. No, no question. Got to take your time. They, sh they should have a concert afterwards for those that want to stay <laughs> and right. those that want to go. You can disperse it, eat a little bit here. And some people stay gives reason to hang around. Uh, I, yeah, I we'll talk we to start Doug having the that. annual we'll Clayton for the post post race conference. I, I think we should start having the annual Clo uh, Clayton Anderson post race uh, party. I, I cannot like agree with that more. I think that is a genius idea. Let's let's I get Doug it. on the let's get Doug on the line right now. Let's let's put him to it. <laughs> we'll we'll have to drop that. Make sure that uh, Chris drops that in his ears. He's got more. Uh, He's got more uh, more sway than any of. Uh, uh, I don't know if I have that I do. Cloud, but I'll I'll work on it. <laughs> Clayton, how are you at Fire Pit Building? Ah, uh, you know, I always prided myself on a good one that would take the smoke right up the straight. You know, instead of spreading it out. You know, it depends on the weather. Depends on that rain. I've always wanted to try one of them smokeless things. See if they actually work. I don't believe it, but. Well, I I ask because Kristen Airy has been hard at work on rebuilding a, a yes. and re relocating uh, a fire pit at his place. Yeah, uh, and and it so was was yeah. Uh, Jim was, was at my house. Uh, Jim was at my house the other day. Uh, delivered some nice bottles of wine, and uh, he was he was watching me as I was going to work. Right, Jim. I mean, watching I'm not watching is the key word. I'm not just a guy who can talk. Right. I, I have landscape abilities. So uh, Jim was seeing those uh, front and center. He always has a project going. It's all he's always well. We're doing this, and now we're doing this, and he's got a couple of uh, of uh, a, a golf flags to 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 point at, to hit at. Uh, two great dogs to run around the yard. A great little layout there. Uh, great spot, and yeah, he's got it all. It's just nice little. Uh, you don't have to leave. Maybe, maybe I should have set up a stage in my backyard, Jim, and have Clayton over for a concert. He's let's, got the room, Clayton. He's got more room than he's using. Let's he's break got it in. More let's room break it in. Hey, I'm not going to lie, too. I, I, I did landscaping to get me through college. So uh, you, were you, are you using pavers? How are you building this? I'm interested. <laughs> I got to see it now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. I've already I've got all the sod up. Uh, we're, we're putting it right off our patio. We're putting flagstone down, crushed limestone, flagstone. Uh, yesterday, Jim, I planted two huge... I call them bushes, but whatever, wherever they are, um, I've got like three more to 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 plant this weekend. I, I try to do it in and around my broadcast schedule. So uh, uh, when it's all done, I think it's going to be great. It's gonna it's gonna make the backyard look fantastic. So that's that's oh, nice. it's that's already that looking that's, fantastic. That's yeah, it's already looking fantastic. What's up next for you, my friend? Uh, well, off to Cleveland at 3 o'clock today, uh, Cavaliers tomorrow night, then we fly back, and then uh, the final regular season home game is Sunday at 1 o'clock against Atlanta, and hopefully after tomorrow night, we know that the Pacers are firmly in the playoffs, and then it would be uh, a week off until the playoffs start, and uh, on Valley Sports, we will do the first round game, so uh, that's great. If the Pacers happen to fall into the play-in tournament, we do not do those. Uh, those are ESPN and TNT only, but uh, uh, two games left and then uh, hopefully plenty more in the playoffs. Looking forward to it, man. Make sure you are giving him a follow and staying up with the, your playoff-headed Pacers. Appreciate you, my friend.
All right. Thanks, guys. Great Let's go, Pacers. All right. See you, Clayton. Chris Denary joining us here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio. We've got more with Clayton Anderson, country music superstar, to court, uh, Nashville recording artist, when we come back right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. In the hey, I'm playing it. Do you hear it? <laughs> Here, be yeah. careful, though. We don't want to get flagged if it comes uh... through enough. <laughs> I'm just there saying. Be, I thought that there was like so long as you, you could play X amount of seconds. I don't. I don't know. know. I, I YouTube don't know. changes their their bylaws or whatever every so often, and it's it's never bylaws. definitive. I feel like bylaws. My laws. I can send you. I can send you a thing. Like there is a way that you got that you can do it. You have to sign up. But it's almost like creating a different account, but. Honestly, it becomes it's not. I don't know if it's worth it. Then you, you know can then you can play anything. You can play absolutely anything you wanted. You can play anyone's music. Huh? Well, I, I'd love to find one of them that we would use as the uh, show intro that we were allowed to play that without getting dinged every damn day. <laughs> well, I can make you one of those. That's easy. What is the maximum? Chris, have you ever got to go up to the dang, have you got to go to the, have you ever been to the Hall of Fame, the Music Hall, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame up there in Cleveland? I have, you, you know, I have not. That's one of the things I, I need to do on one of my trips to Cleveland. Yeah. I never have been oh. either. I've always wanted to go, but my my parents went last year. They said it's pretty awesome. But pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Great to see you, Clayton. Yeah, good to see you too. I love okay. it. I've been watching the season. It's been so yeah. cool as a fan to see all the excitement. Oh, the yeah. The stadium filled up all the time. It's really cool. Yeah, it's been really cool. All right, guys. See you. Thank see you, brother. I appreciate you. All right. Bye. Well, there is no safe. Um, There is no time thing. I think there used to be. What you were saying used to be true. Yep. But yeah, it's, it's, it, it stinks. Pat, I mean, I really pissed McAfee off. I mean, he won't <laughs> even have me back on anymore, but it, 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 uh, I was like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that happened. I didn't know they, at the time that, I mean, that was freaking four years ago. I didn't know. Yes, that was, you're not a, yeah, you're not a, and, and you're not doing this stuff every day. How the hell would you know? Yeah, well, I, well, I didn't, I didn't, because I, I'm, tr I'm trying to help you out here, man. I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the dang, the dang thing is, like when we upload our songs, it's, it's, there's a, it's an algorithm. There's a computer out there that just flags it. It's just, it's, it's silly. All right, here we go. Yes, guys. ten seconds. You can Russell. Enjoy it cooked to perfection in Chop Shop Steakhouse. Chop Shop Market and Table, a part of the Wild Food Group, is your butcher, baker, and fish house, no matter where you live. This segment is brought to you by Bubba's 33 in Clarksville and Evansville. Pizza, burgers, beer. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Welcome back. Unfortunately, we're not playing the music of Clayton Anderson. Uh, we wish we were, but uh, we want to get dinged on uh, playing copyrighted music, even though we have the author with us. But <laughs> you can find Clayton's music at? Everywhere. Just Google Clayton Anderson, and uh, it'll be me and the astronaut, and I'm not the astronaut. I've got... <laughs> Do you have a specific site, though? A lot of guys have, hey, go to, uh, you know, ClaytonAndersonMusic.com or whatever. Yeah, I have a I have a website, ClaytonAndersonOfficial.com. That's got our tour dates and and links to music. But I mean, everyone, you got to be everywhere. So Spotify. I mean, the cool. I mean, everything's on YouTube, so you can you can uh, listen to YouTube for free. Um, if you don't have Spotify or Apple Music, uh, we don't. We, we want people buying your music, brother. We're not trying to push well, the hey, free stuff well, it here. It pays. It pays. The the the. The thing is shifted. It's it's you don't. I mean, if you if you're like one of the big artists that are streaming, well, even even these guys make deals with the labels. So so 
uh, Spotify, Amazon, Apple Music, they go to these labels and say, okay, we're going to cut you a check for X amount of money. And then they can stream as much as they're, that's why it's hard for independent people to get more streaming and get up on bigger playlists because uh, the they've already paid the label so they can play a label artist as much as they want and uh, not have to pay. But it's the, the money's in touring, the money's in ticket sales. So that's why we hope a lot of people come out <laughs> this Saturday and see us at Memorial Stadium. And speaking of Saturday night, that is the kicking off of the full ride tour happens at Memorial Stadium in Bloomington. Uh, you can get tickets for less than $20. And I'm not kidding. I was at Taco Bell a couple of nights ago, and I spent more than that in the drive through at Taco Bell. It, uh, it's a, that's a heck of a deal. Uh, it, it, you're getting... Fu- we're talking, first of all, we're talking Clayton Anderson. That, that's, that's, you've already, so your ticket's already paid for. You've already paid for itself. But we're going to throw in a couple of, uh, uh, you, you may have heard of them. Uh, Kane Brown is uh, headlining the tour. John Party and uh, Jesse Murph. I'm not familiar with Jesse Murph. Is he kind of new? <laughs> she, she's, uh, she's pretty she, good. <laughs> see, I told you I wasn't familiar. I didn't she, lie. Uh, she's she's a pop singer that they're making country, or was oh, a that's pop like uh, Dasha or something like that. Oh yeah, she's a pop singer making country too. It's it's a country's popular thing to be in right now. It's a uh, it's really uh, it's really pretty incredible, and I think it's great. More more than welcome. I I don't care who comes and sings it. It's it's better. It's great for the the more they can expand it and. And and uh, get more followers, the better it is for country music. Yeah, you have these people like me, the 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 hardliners, which you know your music sounds like country music to me. Yeah. My kind of country music, what I'm used to, and I was not a fan, and I don't mean it to be negative because they have a lot of fans. But when Georgia, Florida line was those kind of guys, I'm like, yeah. That's a little too much sugar for me, boys. Uh, <laughs> but it's it all works when the biggest. I, I remember hearing a hardcore country singers talk about one of the biggest things to ever happen to country music was Ray Charles doing a country music album, and what that did for the genre, the audience it opened it up to, and the how it showed that hey man, these songs are universal. And, but, you know, Ray Charles could sing the phone book and make it sound badass. <laughs> he sure, he sure could. It truly is. I mean, country music is just about a great story. It's the, the lyric that, that really gets me. And you can put any instrument over it, you know. I mean, the Dixie Chicks were kind of wild. They brought back a banjo. The banjo hadn't even been in country music for a while. And it, 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 it was funny. Flows. Every, until they said, until they said down, one sentence. Change. What's that? One sentence brought it all down for him, though. Oh boy, did it ever! That's crazy. I mean, they were the biggest band in the world. That's it, how cr- that is nuts. I, I'm like, you know what? People do things that piss me off all the time. I don't get that. I don't go that overboard. You talk about a near career-ending kind of a deal. That's yeah. it. It it was close to that. Yeah, you can you can throw chairs off buildings in Nashville, try to kill people, and you can do everything else. But by golly, you you you, you put the president down. You are that was a crazy time in American history, though. You know, I mean, nine yeah. eleven had just happened. Everybody's very patriotic. I mean, we were a lot more we were a lot more together then than we are. You know, everyone's not to talk politics, but we're just a little more separated now. But it, it is crazy. It it is crazy how and they've never recovered from it, but. I think that that lead singer, she's one heck of a lead singer, but she has a hard time oh. keeping her mouth shut. <laughs> well, some. and that's and that that hurts you. It really does. And there are people that that uh, think that they that the platform they have that they should use for other things. Mm-hmm. And I'm not opposed to anybody having an opinion about anything, but I disagree. I'm like, you know, wait a minute. This is not your lane. And if you're not an expert in that, shut up because you're going to falsely put upon people who look up to you and think you might know something that you don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the way with the whole internet world right now. It's like 
maybe you should educate yourself before you start spewing off something that your friend sent you that's probably not even true anyway so educate yourself to find the fact of it you know it's 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 so uh <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of false things out there so it's you should you should definitely educate that's what i like to sometimes people are like oh why don't you say something about this i was like because i don't know anything about it i'm sure there's i'm sure there's five other things that you read behind the headline that are that really make it cool or make it make a difference on how you feel about it but that's and and you can't and you get it's it yeah i don't know country music fans are they're loyal they they love our country you and and i do too you know it's like it's, I get frustrated with it all. Well, let's get back to the fun stuff. Uh, <laughs> the the concert, which is very cool. Again, this has not happened in, 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 since in almost 40 years. 38 yeah. years, there's only been one to my knowledge, and it was Melon Camp. I don't think there was another before that, I because that was the first. I remember it being the first stadium concert, yeah. and I'm shocked, and I don't understand why there has not been anything in between, you got a campus full of kids, first of all, gee whiz, then yeah. you've got a town, and then everything that surrounds Bloomington, whether it's Bedford or these other, o Owen County or wherever, I think there's a lot of country music fans out there. Yeah, it's it's it shocked me too. I'm, I'm so happy they did it. I'm so happy to be a part of it. Um, I mean, I mean, I got my love on for Indiana right here, you know? I mean, I Look at him go. Day. So it's... Uh, yeah, I don't know why they haven't. Ohio State's been doing it the last three years. I mean, they've they've sold out that stadium for big concerts. So, and that's uh, twice the size of Indiana's. Yeah, so so I'm fired up. I think the kids, you know, they've really. When I was a student there, we all griped, said, "Oh, they don't give us anything to do." So now there's something to do, and and even my town of Bedford, you know, they always gripe. There's nothing to do either, and you give them something to do, then they they still maybe they will show up, maybe they won't, but. We're hoping everybody comes out and they've done it such a nice way. And they talked about this. They want to give everybody an opportunity to come and doing it in a larger venue allows you to have a ticket price that maybe it's in the top row and in the back, but everyone can, uh, you know, you can afford to come, come see the show. And that's, that's what I really love. Cause I, I hate doing shows where you gotta, they jam the ticket price up so much. You can't, you can't even show up without mortgage in your home. Uh, well, I can tell you this. And, and I know this is not a complete fair comparison, but uh, you're not far off of it. But I remember when I was in college, of course, this is back around the time that we talked about Mellon Camp uh, doing that show. But this was um, a couple of years after that. The Rolling Stones were in Louisville playing at the old Cardinal Stadium there, which is was the one that faced the interstate uh old junkie stadium but the rolling stones were playing there tickets were $40 wow and that that's probably 80 to 90 to 100 dollars in today's money mm -hmm. uh we're talking $19.50 for how long has john party been around no, he's, been around, been, around. he's been around as long as i have we came out we i was in nashville i met him in 2012 when i first moved down there i think he dropped his first record in 13 uh he's great i i, I yeah. played so many shows we played shows from cincinnati to chicago to everywhere i played so many shows i probably played more shows with him than i have anybody and what's really cool about this though is 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 i played shows with him when uh, we played in fort wayne one time and i had more people show up to see me than they did him and i felt really bad and uh, i bet you did I, well i, kind of, I really <laughs> kind of did i mean that stinks that is not a fun feeling i've <laughs> I've been on the end where no one shows up to see you. And it's like, Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, I played to two people in Atlanta, Georgia one time I about died. So it, uh, it's, it's a, and it happens to everybody. It happens to Eric church. He, I remember a story that he personally told to me and a club owner that he played to 14 people in, in Chicago, in Chicago, Joe's bar. And, uh, and so it, it's been really see to see his progress and see his success to be able to uh, as big as he is now, which is pretty cool and makes me envious that I wasn't in that country music machine too. So getting pushed is hard, but it's a, uh, oh, it's a, uh, it's pretty cool to see it. Well, you can get a general admission ticket, like I said, for less than twenty dollars, but they also have other packages. The Hoosier Experience, it's sold out, baby. Uh, the next thing is the full ride pit package. 
for uh, $199 that you can get. And that includes a uh, general admission pit ticket, which is closest to the stage. It gives you early entrance into the stadium through a dedicated entrance, priority access to purchasing merchandise, which uh, Clayton will have his merchandise out there, I'm sure, and oh, records yeah. and CDs uh, and all of that. And you also get a commemorative full ride tour VIP laminate so you can be somebody. Uh, also, the Triton Lounge Experience, which gives you premium reserve seating, dedicated entrance as well, access to the VIP lounge, and a dedicated cash bar, and a commemorative uh, laminate as well, including uh, exclusive merch, one exclusive merch item that you get, and premium parking. So, uh, man, you got there's a lot of ways you can go about it. Yeah. Uh, so, it, it's just going to be a great, great deal. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. I'll be out there. I cannot wait. Yeah. Uh, haven't seen, uh, Clayton perform for two years, but, uh, that was down in bedrock in Bedford. Uh, and I know that Mike is, is looking forward to, he's going to have a, a, a summer concert series at, uh, the rusty gator down there. So, um, I know he's hoping to get Clayton to headline that baby. Uh, mm -hmm. he is the headliner. What's it like when you come home? I mean, you know, Coming home has always been, there's been songs written about it. It's always, it's easy, but it's hard. It's fun, but it's stressing. It's like such a, dual, a duality of, of experiences. Yeah, it, uh, for me, I never wanted to leave Bedford uh, ever. I wanted, to live, I wanted to live there. I wanted to grow up there. Uh, my sister wanted to leave right away, but she's still there. And then I had to, I had, I had no choice. I had to go to Nashville to chase this thing. And, um, it, it feels amazing to come home one because I get my grandma's uh, breakfast and eggs and gravy and everything. So that's going to make me a little chubbier oh, on stage. But uh, okay. there, there is a little there is a little stress to it. You know, you you, you don't want to disappoint anybody. You want to you want to make everybody have a good time and because it, it's your hometown. And and uh, so I, I feel a little pressure on on it that way. But um, other than that, I just I love being I don't think there's any better place in southern Indiana. So. I, uh, I love, I love being able to come back and play. How did you end up getting, because all the people that have dreams, uh, and they follow and there's so many that, that don't, don't get to, to make it. You were able to get to Nashville to, to, uh, you're, and you're still striving on that, but just getting there, that is, that's half or more of the battle. Yeah. It, uh, there's so many great, it's, it was tough. It was a hard decision. You know, you leave everything, you know, you, 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 you it took a little, took a little courage. Luckily I had super supportive parents and supportive friends. And I just kind of, you just have to make the leap, you know, you, you got to add it. And, and really what pushed me was, I just didn't want to be a grumpy old man one day on, on my back porch saying, Oh, wish I would have, wish I would have, you know, I just didn't want to have any regrets. And I, I've tried to live my life. I feel like I've always lived my life that way. Just no regrets. Try your hardest. If you, if you, and my mom always said, if you just, if you try your hardest, there's nothing to be disappointed in, you know, you, you know, and that's, and that's what I've tried with sports to, to music is try my best work hard. And, and then I can, I can sleep at night that way. When did you know that you, you could, you could really sing, not just sing, but really sing. But I don't even know if I still can sing. That's that's my biggest that's my biggest insecurity, I think. But uh, I knew I could entertain people. I knew um, the first time I really went out because I when I was playing around IU and we would play all the college towns from IU to Purdue, Indiana State, Ball State. But when I went out to play and we were playing in Athens, Georgia, and I was like, wow, I'm gonna really figure out if I can if these people really like me or if it was just because they were my friends or something. So we played, we played one show there and we started getting calls from all the college towns in the sec and ACC. And I was like, Hey, I think, I think we got something. And uh, so that really inspired me. We started playing college towns all over the country and then it led me into Nashville and, and uh, the rest is history, I guess. We've got a just a minute left. Uh, your band, all for Indiana guys as well, right? Yeah, I, I used to have a big Nashville band, but I, 
I, I've enjoyed playing. When COVID happened, I got a, a bunch of guys from Indiana, and I've never looked back. It's the, the, the most the band that I have right now is the most awesome band I've ever played with. I'm, I'm very proud to play with these guys. They're incredible musicians, and and uh, I like keeping it home in Indiana. Just go to fullridetour.com for your tickets uh, of different different levels to get that. That happens Saturday night, April 13th at Indiana's Memorial Stadium. Cannot wait. Man, I cannot thank you enough. As always, Clayton Anderson for coming on. You're always a blast. Always a blast to be around. And I can't wait to see you on Saturday. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's good, good seeing you at the state finals game and uh, basketball game. And then uh, – we hit the stage at 5.30, by the way, so don't be out there pre-partying in the parking lot too long. We we go on early. I did notice that. I'm like, boy, well, you know, you've got four different people, so you got to get through all that. And I did see a picture of Jesse, and he is no girl. I mean, he is no boy, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's for sure. Big thanks to uh, Shannon Griffith, Tyler Smith, and Kristen Airy as well. And uh, John, for keeping us between the white lines, most importantly, thanks to each and every one of you. We're back to do this again tomorrow. Until then, I'm Jim Coyle. I will see you on the radio. Thanks for listening to Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page for more clips and team coverage of Indiana basketball, football, and more. You can also find full episodes and tons of other content on thehoosier.com. We'll see you next time for another edition of Indiana Sports Beat Radio.